October, Halloween, a very scary time. I love the classic monster stories. And today we have with us Eric Sirota, who is the composer, the playwright, the creator of Frankenstein, a new musical coming uh, to the St. Luke's Theater. I'm excited to uh, meet you, Eric. And, and Eric, you're a scientist. How did you end up creating or recreating and, and translating uh, Frankenstein? Uh, well, let's see, I, I started uh, in theater really from the music side, you know, writing music and then uh, I saw a play, my mom took me to a play based on Frankenstein, and uh, then I reread the book, and um, I uh, heard it sing in my head as a musical. I was at the time, uh, uh, like Victor Frankenstein, uh, away getting my PhD in physics far from home and far from the girl I loved, and uh, this story spoke to me both intellectually and emotionally. I started conceiving of writing a musical, and that was many years ago. Uh, and it took a long time to get to here. To uh, get to off-Broadway. <laughs> to get to off-Broadway. Yeah. Many years of development, pre-writing. So how many years did you develop this? This sounds like it's a, it's, it's a lifelong work almost. Uh, well, actively, really, the last five years. Uh, and then I got back to music about 10 years ago, uh, writing another musical and reworking another one. And then I came back to uh, Frankenstein, which was actually called Day of Wrath. We originally developed it under that name because I wanted something different than just calling it Frankenstein. It was in the New York Music Theater Festival two years ago under the name of Day of Wrath. It was as a staged reading, so it wasn't a production. Um, oh, so it wasn't a full production? No, it wasn't a full, it was, it was in their uh, reading series. It was like an official selection of their reading series. So is this so, like the world debut? Or? Yeah, this is the, the, okay. the first full actual uh, production. And uh, uh, we realized that people wouldn't know what Day of Wrath was. They would say, well, what's Day of Wrath? And we would say Frankenstein. And so why not just call it Frankenstein, Frankenstein. because that's what it is. Uh, people know what it is. It's not exactly following every detail of Mary Shelley's story. So tell us, yeah. how's it different? Well, uh, if you're going to uh, de uh, develop or uh, you know, adapt uh, something for a stage, you have to figure out what parts you want to put on stage. Uh, the structure of a musical is not the structure of a book. You have to structure it as one which is going to be compelling and make the characters you portray be compelling and not have it go for three and a half hours. So you know, you, you, one has to also limit the locations. So instead of having uh, you know Victor Frankenstein go to all these different places, we keep it a little more localized, have a finite number of characters. Is it a love story? Is it? Uh, tell us about what you're focusing on in terms of the play itself. Um, oh, well, in terms of the uh, musical. Well, I think uh, the, the way I wrote it, it's about the human need for love and companionship. So while horror is present, as well as themes of scientific responsibility and all of that, it right. really is uh, uh, an, an emotional uh, uh, story. I focus on both Victor's relationship with Elizabeth and vice versa, and most importantly, the creature's need for love and is unable to uh, get it because there is no mate for him. Uh, and uh, he compares that to Victor's and Victor's creator uh, through the Bible, which actually is another slight difference from Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley references Milton's Paradise Lost, which is much more inaccessible to people and less familiar than the Bible. So that they went direct to point. biblical references that are more familiar than Paradise Lost. Yeah, I, I guess a lot of people don't realize that uh, the monster is, is really... Oh, we call him the creature. The creature, yes. yes the creature, the creature. That's, uh, that's a, a value judgment. Uh, you know, yeah, the monster is... Very, you know, I'm in that, <laughs> yeah, hollow, no, that Halloween yeah. thing, yeah. But yeah, the creature is actually a very uh, tragic character. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and you know, this ability to get a sympathetic profile uh, from a story of the creature is, is really a, you know, a very nice approach. Well, abandoned by his parent, his creator, uh, yeah. which uh, is uh, something that everyone deserves, at least the love of their parents. And, at least, and, right. And, and then, then the, the, the chance of finding someone else, because there is someone there for everyone, uh, at least for humans, not for Victor's creation, because he only made one. 
Tell me about the music. What, what's described the music for me a little bit? Uh, it's sort of a classically inspired, um, uh, you know, people describe it as a gothic feel. Uh, oh, I like I'm not that. sure what gothic actually <laughs> uh, means in that context, but I like uh, it, it, it has, uh, it has, it's definitely classically inspired. Uh, the period of the piece, you know, takes us back a few centuries, so it's, it's not attempting to be, uh, you know, early 1800s music or 1700s music. It's, uh, it's uh, musical theater music, but in the uh, uh, classically inspired vein. Open on October 2nd. Uh, you're going to play once a week, if I recall. Um, how does it feel to see this play kind of materialize before your eyes and, and about to debut off-Broadway? That must be an incredible oh. feeling. Oh, it's, it, it, it's incredibly exciting. I've seen uh, uh, you know, the work go through a staged reading of the Emerging Artist, which was the first staged reading at New York Music Theater Festival. It was an almost staged, staged reading with a lot of, uh, a lot of action, so it developed even more. But now, you know, there's a full team doing uh, costumes and light and uh, directing and, uh, and uh, the incredible Everything. music director, uh, uh, and then Essa Marie, who's uh, interpreted my other work, uh, Your Name on My Lips, just recently, and I'm so excited to see what she's uh, doing with this one. Uh, I've heard pieces of it, and... Uh, very, yeah. very emotional thing yeah. to see that happen. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I congratulate you. You're going off Broadway. Uh, you're going to be here at the St. Luke's Theater. Uh, if you're wondering where I am, that's the purple wall and the stage is over here and Eric is right next to me. There's stuff going on here at the theater. So if you hear a little background noise, that's what it is. That's theater, always active. I'm excited for you. Uh, it's going to be through opening in October. So, you know, should people come here because they're in that Halloween mood or what, what's going to draw them? The music? The need for love and the creature. I think all, all three. There's all three. things for the horror fans. There are things to want to understand the, the literary aspects of it and the people who are, uh, you know, Mary Shelley fans and would want to see uh, a romantic um, musical. And uh, yeah, I Everything. think there's something for everyone. But listen, folks, please, the information is going to be there, so please follow us on Facebook. Uh, all the links are going to be there. Uh, order your tickets now. Uh, opening night is October 2nd. Nine. Or is a preview. The preview is the 2nd. The 2nd. Opening is the 9th. And the 9th, and it's going to run every week. Uh, what night? Monday? Monday nights, uh, with like, one exception, but there are two special Sunday performances, October 22nd and 29th, prior to Halloween. So There you go, uh, folks. So make sure you look at those links. Eric, congratulations. This Thank is you. a wonderful thing for you. Uh, the scientist, the mad scientist who <laughs> wrote Frankenstein. Well, he's not mad. He's really quite nice. Uh, folks, uh, follow us on uh, localtheaterny.com. Make sure to follow our groups. Make sure to follow all the links and share this video. Come see this wonderful music for the holidays.